Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to St. Bernard Acres and the off-grid cabin. This is Saturday, April 8th, day before Easter. Um, today I'm going to try to replace the pump for the water in the, in the cabin. That's my plan. It's a little chilly still. Man, it got up to 80 during the week, and now it's, you know, you can see it's all overcast. Uh, I got enough light. The wind's picking up now. I mean, I got enough. It powered up my battery bank, and it's charging my uh, power stations right now that I used to do the live stream tonight with. So I'm not complaining about the solar. But what I got here is a Seaflow water pressure system. Three gallons per minute. Three gallons. Uh, this is a Flowjet 12 volt pump that I was that I had hooked up originally. The problem with these pumps, you need like a uh, accumulator tank because what happens if you just run it straight from the pump it's pulsing it comes out of the faucet's pulsing I don't know if you guys have seen that or not um, that's why wells and water systems have a pressure tank that keeps it an even flow and the pump doesn't have to work as hard but it's on demand basically water on demand so when you open a faucet this pumps and it has it shoots up what it needs you know it pulses I don't know how to explain it so what is in here this is gonna work I'm gonna try to I mean this is a good pump um, I'm gonna try to use it at the well over there see what we'll just play with it but what this is I love this thing this was not sent to me by Seaflow. It's not endorsed. I'm not endorsing anything. I bought it. <laughs> I'm stuck with it. And I have to make it work. But what I'm going to be doing here, what comes in the box, it wasn't cheap either. It's like 130 bucks on Amazon. So... I was looking for an accumulator tank for the flow jet and this is what I decided to get instead this is the pump the accumulator tank and what happens is the water comes in this holds a certain amount you draw it through the faucet and once it gets down to a certain level the pump will kick on fill this back up again that way your flow continues at your faucet. That's the accumulator. That's the job of the accumulator tank. Then I have, let me get it. This strainer will go on before the pump. This will keep debris out of the pump. And I had none of this stuff for that flow jet that I was using. So now, the water is going to come in and go through this strainer, then into the pump. This will unscrew and I can clean this strainer out anytime I need to. That's the idea behind it. <laughs> this will go out to the faucets. This pump, it's a 33 series. It's big enough to do three different sinks or shower. I'm going to use it for the kitchen sink. The shower I'm going to put in and the toilet. I'm gonna have a flush toilet with a little septic system I'm putting in. So this will handle it all and it's real easy to hook up your 12 volt just right there. It's all wired in for you so that you don't have to do like I had to do on that flow jet and put everything together. So yeah. I will try to video as much of this as I can. You know, it's difficult to do. 
and I have several tools, <laughs> several different things. I don't know what all I'm going to need. Uh, I'm going to put everything in this box to carry over there. Now I had a uh, three-quarter inch hose, three-quarter, three-eighths inch hose for the flow jet here. It came out three-eighths. I have to have half inch for this. I could not find half inch 20 foot sections. I could only find half inch 10 foot sections. And I think I need about 12 feet to go from the pump to the kitchen sink. So I've got barbed connectors to put on there to splice two of these together. And then I can cut it to length. But, and I know where I'm mounting it under the trailer under the trailer, under the cabin. I got a couple scrap two by fours I'm gonna put up there. That way I can mount it right onto these. Because this was just mounted onto one of the floor joists. I don't have enough room in there for that because it's got a screw from the top and the bottom. And my floor joists aren't big enough for that. So let me get everything set up over there and then we'll be back. So, this is where everything's going to happen. <laughs> uh, the pump is going to go up under here. I have, this is the existing 3 8 line that I'm going to take out of here because I need half inch. What I'm hoping is the hole that I drilled in the floor to bring this up, is, the diameter is enough for this half inch hose. And what I'm going to wind up doing is trying to pull kind of like electricians do <laughs> when they're running wire with fish tape. I'm going to try to tape these two together and then pull it up through the hole so I don't have to try to crawl underneath the cabin and fish it up through there by myself because I don't have anybody to help. I'm out here alone. I wonder if that'll fit inside of here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's just perfect. If I push that in here, run some duct tape around there. I should be able to pull that right up in that hole because there is a little bit of space. It looks like that's an eighth inch wall maybe. Let's see, where's my box? Well, I'm not going to do it here. What I'm going to do is this is 20 feet. I'm going to cut it over there where it's only about five feet I have to pull up. And uh, I'll pull it in. Then I'll see how much I have to add on. Like I said, I've got little barbed things to splice these together. And I have clamps to clamp them together. So the first step is to get this up into the faucet. So let me go to work here. That's preliminary stuff. You don't need to watch all of that. Do I have what I need? That's the question. I have Gorilla Tape, and I have a utility knife. With a utility knife and Gorilla Tape, I can do anything. So I'm going to pull this out and cut it as close as I can to the hole inside there. Put these together and see what I can do. 
I will turn the camera off because there may be some inappropriate language. And this way I won't have to edit it out. <laughs> Alright, I'm back. That worked. And I taped this extra onto the half inch because I knew that it was going to be short and I didn't want to have to climb up underneath there to get to this. So now what I got to do is put my splice on to the next one. And in fact, I think it's going to be easier to do it over there, obviously, because that is not long enough. Ten feet don't get it. And that's why I bought extra. Now coming out of the rain barrels, I already have half inch. So I don't have to worry about that. So now, I have half inch tubing going to the faucet. That's awesome. I needed, I don't know if you can see where the clamps are, but I probably needed three feet. So I have an extra six or seven feet. Now, I can get into the pump part. And I want to take this off. No, I don't. I already taped that on. This, I want pointing down. All right, so again, water comes in from the barrels. Goes through the strainer, through the pump, into the accumulator tank, out to the faucet. Very easy. So now I have to crawl underneath it and decide where it's going. And what all I have to do to make it work. Take my hat off for a minute. All right, well, you don't get any mounting hardware with this, any screws to mount it with, and drywall screws and regular screws won't work because the heads go right through this thing. So I'm going to try these roofing screws, see if I can get them up in here. So I'm gonna put the two up here then I'll cut a piece to go underneath here for the bottom ones later. After I get all this, see if this works. Ah, dang it. Let's try and do it right there and see what we get. Let me see if I can get my faucet hose on here. Like so. Oh, I better put a, let me get a clamp, get my hose back, put the clamp on it, now let's do it. Damn it. All right. 
Now, let's put the other side on. This is coming from the rain barrels. Okay, now for my 12 volt connection, that's this is my power line. So, let me dig out <laughs> and get my damn utility knife. All right, oh, God damn, man. Whew. Keep hitting my head on stuff. Let's put these in place. Ah. All right, so everything is done underneath here. <laughs> put my glasses back on. Hopefully everything is done underneath here. Now I have to go into the power shed and hook up the 12 volts uh, to supply power to this thing. Hopefully you can see this. this. I'm gonna hook this up and then I'll explain to you what I've done here. But this is a fuse box. These are negatives, these are the positives, and the fuses go in here. This pump requires a 12 amp fuse. So, or 10 amp. Not 12 amp. Let me get some, I don't have it. The fuse in there so I don't have any power while I hook all this up or attempt to. I am not an electrician as you guys know. All right, I'm gonna plug in a fuse and see what happens. That's a 10 amp fuse. That should have completed the circuit. Here's the pump going. It filled up the accumulator. So, I know I got power to it. What I've got here, you guys remember, this is a 24 volt system. I'm at 29. My batteries are floating now. And I've charged up both my power stations. So I got a 24 volt system. What happens, it goes into this pile uh, inverter or converter. It takes the 24 volt DC power, converts it to 12 volt, 24 volt comes in, 12 volt comes out. So all my 12 volt devices I can put on there. So that's what I've done. That's how you go from 24 volt to 12 volt. So now the test is, see where my batteries are. I don't know if you can even see that. Um, so now I have to go turn a faucet on because the pump filled up the accumulator. Let's see if I have any leaks. There's the hose coming out of the barrel. Turn this around so I can see it a little bit better. There's the water hose coming out of the barrel. These two barrels are connected down there. <laughs> I 
and the hose the water goes in this one fills that one up at the same time all the sediment hopefully any sediment would stay in this one very little will get into that one so I see nothing leaking and I have a pressurized system so let's go see if I can turn a faucet on Whew. you have to forgive the mess I brought my little inverter generator because we weren't supposed to have any sun today. Fortunately, it came out for a little bit, but it charged everything up that I needed. All right. Here comes the test. Now, I have a bucket underneath here for a drain for right now. It says let it run for a couple of minutes. Look at that. Smooth as you'd want it. Hell yes. There's my bucket. So. I would say that's a success. No pulsating. A nice steady flow. I think that's a little bit more pressure than I get at home even. Yeah. That's just, oh my goodness. How sweet is that? All right. Okay, now let me go double check everything again. Just to make sure nothing's leaking. After I got all the lines charged. I think that's what plumbers call them, charging the lines. I don't know. Correct me, plumbers, if I'm wrong. But I have a mess to clean up. I don't hear anything dripping. Let me get down here. Get down on my hands and knees again. Yeah. Up, oh, I have a leak. So let me try to tighten that up. Where's it leaking at? Yeah. Right here. All right, I had read that that connection didn't need any Teflon tape. So I didn't put any on, but I took that apart. I put some Teflon tape on it, put it back together, and guess what? It ain't leaking. So even though it says that type doesn't need Teflon tape, put it on anyway. Now let's go see if we have water pressure again. Ah. Boy, didn't expect a leak. <laughs> now I got to charge it back up again. Man, I like the pressure. It says 45 PSI. And you know what? I believe it. I believe that's what it is. Let's see here. Yes, indeed. There you go. Get the air out of it. Smooth out. Look at it now. Hells yes. I don't want to overflow my Steeler bucket. <laughs> Oh, heck. Yeah. All right. There's cold water, at least. 
So we have running water in the cabin. Let me go check one more time for leaks before I call it a success. Glad there was only the one leak. But trust me, I am not an electrician, nor am I a plumber. So having one spot that had a leak, I'm content with that. I'll accept that. Hopefully, it's still not leaking. Because after I filled up all the pressure, that's when it started leaking. <sighs> No drips, no runs, no drips, no errors. All right. <laughs> yeah, boys and girls. There's running water in the off-grid cabin. Hell yes. And that's one of the things I wanted to make sure I accomplished this weekend. So that part is done. Next project is tomorrow's Easter. I'm eating Gary for Easter breakfast. Then, well, I ought to go get them now because they may be closed. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go grab something to eat now and go to Tractor Supply and get all the posts I need because tomorrow we're putting a fence up for the dog. Uh, I'll see if this thing leaks overnight. But I'm going to leave now. Go get me some lunch. I don't even know what time it is. But go get me some lunch and go get uh, the tea post of the cheapest at Tractor Supply, folks. They're $2 cheaper than Lowe's with my discount. So always shop around. Always check. And... That's it. I'm going to close this video out. Go give me something to eat, then I'll edit it and upload it and get ready for my live stream tonight because I am going to try to do one. I'm not going to do a taste test. I'm not going to do that every week. It's going to be probably every other week I'll do the, the cooking and testing and stuff. But let me clean up my mess, put all my stuff away like a good boy, and go grab a bite to eat. I will see you all tonight at 8 o'clock. We'll talk about a water system. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. I'm out.